Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at the origin of the slipping on a banana peel comedy gag. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by TunnelBear. TunnelBear makes really simple apps to help you browse a more private and open internet. For a free seven-day trial, please visit tunnelbear.com slash brainfood. There are some things in this world that are just inherently funny. The pie in the face, an unexpected squirting flower, and a kitten in a shark costume riding a rumba chasing after a duck are just a few of the best examples. But nothing has become quite the staple of physical comedy as the slipping on a banana peel gag. Physical comedy, when humor arises from physical acts rather than words, is the world's oldest form of comedy, dating back to at least ancient Egypt in 2500 BC. This type of humor is often dependent on schadenfreude, the ability to derive pleasure from the misfortune of others. Clowns and mimes during Greek and Roman times often employed these techniques to the delight of the audience. Bald and heavily padded, these clowns would smack each other around, eliciting laughter from an audience all too happy they weren't the ones on stage and being hurt. Sometimes they would even employ the use of a stick to heighten the sound of the whack to give greater comedic appeal, literally slapstick. Minstrel shows of antebellum America used physical comedy as a way to reinforce stereotypes and mock African Americans by depicting them as lazy, clumsy, and dim-witted. In the 19th century, the slapstick was passed to the English and American vaudeville halls, where the most popular acts were comedy-based. Performers slipping, smacking, and falling across the stage made audiences go bananas. The advent of film was the perfect medium for the very visual gags of physical comedy. Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, and Charlie Chaplin all perfected their acts on screen, utilizing what film was great for, the ability to direct the attention of the viewer. Now, in 1866, a man by the name of Carl B. Frank began importing a long yellow fruit called a banana into New York City from northern Panama. This banana came right from where the Panama Canal currently is. This wasn't the first time bananas had made their way to North America. In the early 19th century, sailors returning from trips to the Southern Americas would load up on this tropical cargo, attempting to make a small profit. This was the first time, though, that someone tried to mass import this mostly unknown fruit. And, well, it worked. At the Centennial International Exposition of 1876, the first World's Fair to be held in the United States, bananas wrapped in tin foil were sold for 10 cents each to the curious shopper. Within a few few years, bananas became a favorite fruit and a common street food. It should be noted here that the popular banana in the early 20th century was not the Cavendish banana we all eat today, but rather the much more popular Gross Michael, which had a longer shelf life, was larger, and was more durable in transport. This is largely why it was so popular. Unfortunately, very suddenly, it was almost completely wiped out globally during the banana apocalypse, which many think will soon happen to the Cavendish banana in the coming decades for more or less the same reason. In any event, coupled with lack of basic civil services like trash cans and street sweepers, banana peels were often thrown onto the streets and left to rot and decompose. The more rotted a banana peel was, the more slippery it became. In 1879, the popular magazine Harper's Weekly criticized people for haphazardly tossing their banana peels on the ground by saying, whosoever throws banana skins on the sidewalk does a great unkindness to the public and is quite likely to be responsible for a broken limb. This wasn't just a tall tale either. Several periods saw Sources claimed that banana peels were responsible for broken limbs, including some that reportedly were so badly broken that they had to be amputated. Whether that's true or not, it became such an issue in American cities that in 1909, the St. Louis City Council outlawed throwing or casting a banana peel out in public. The first known person to use the banana peel as a physical comedy instrument was Sliding Billy Watson, famous for his sliding entrances from the wings of the stage. Billy Watson was one of the most successful and rich vaudeville performers of his day. He had seen a man on the street attempting to keep his balance after slipping on a banana peel and found it so amusing that he incorporated it into his act. Another comedian, Cal Stewart, also famously incorporated banana-related humor into his stand-up act. And then there's the big screen. The first time the banana peel appeared on the big screen was in Charlie Chaplin's movie By the Sea. Playing his world-famous character, The Tramp, he tosses a banana peel onto the ground without paying any attention, only to slip on his own garbage later. Soon, all the silent film stars were doing their own version of the banana peel gag. In the Harold Lloyd comedy The Flirt, featuring B.B. Daniels as the love interest, Lloyd carefully peels a banana and tosses the skin onto the ground. A rude waiter slips on it and goes crashing to the ground. Buster Keaton then took the joke to the next level in the 1921 film high step. Spotting a banana peel on the street, Keaton walks over it and silently mocks the peel for trying to do him harm. 
Of course, he then takes a step further and slips on a banana peel that he didn't see. And now for a bonus fact. In the late 1800s, major cities like New York thought that they had found a solution to their rotting trash problem. And this solution was wild pigs. Cities would allow wild pigs to roam and eat the trash, including banana peels, off the streets. Needless to say, this didn't work very well. Besides not doing a particularly good job, the wild pigs got violent and became a public nuisance. According to Dan Copel's book, Banana, The Fate of the Fruit That Changed the World, the trash problem in New York was solved at the turn of the century by a former Civil War colonel named George Waring. He organized a fleet of white-uniformed workers called the White Wings to sweep and dispose of the waste in public composting facilities. Copel makes the claim that this was the first large-scale recycling effort in the United States. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed that video, and now it's time for me to tell you about Tunnel Bear. You've probably heard me mention them on this show before. They've done a couple of sponsorships with us previously. Basically, Tunnel Bear, it's a simple VPN app that means that you can browse a more private and a more open internet. So with this sponsorship, it's actually pretty cool because Tunnel Bear, well, it's a service I've used for a long time. They didn't actually approach us about doing this ad. We reached out to Tunnel Bear and were like, hey, I really love what you're doing. Would you be interested in doing a spot like this on this show and they said yes please so uh my experience with them you know to reach out to a company like that it's it, I, I like it it's a really solid app across all platforms so now let me tell you a little bit about tunnel bear and what it does tunnel bears a vpn and vpns are the first step to protecting your privacy on the internet if you don't like companies storing all your data and following you around with ads use a vpn if you don't like facebook following your browsing habits boom vpn look your computer it's all the time sending out all kinds of identifying information about where you are, what type of device you're using, how long you were on specific websites, and even how you navigated to those sites. So now you might have heard of ad blockers, you might be using an ad blocker. These do stay, they kind of prevent some of that, but if you really want proper security and to prevent that kind of surveillance, then a VPN is your next step. When your device, whatever that may be, a computer, phone, tablet, connects to a VPN, your personal data, it's replaced by a third party's information. This makes it look like you're coming from a private network that has no identifying information about you. So that should really illustrate the fact that VPNs are important, especially if you're concerned about your privacy. So so basically, you know, that's what VPNs are, you know, they're important. Now comes the question, why should I use Tunnel Bear? And I would say you should use Tunnel Bear because, well, it's the best, but you know, I'm going to say that because obviously I'm going to say that. So let me talk some specifics about why you, why, why Tunnel Bear really is the best. For one, it respects your privacy. Yeah, I, I know it's weird for me to say that this is a privacy company and it respects your privacy. I mean, don't all VPNs respect your privacy? Well, Tunnel Bear is, is, is an exception. They're really, really serious about privacy. They're their privacy policy, uh, which is, you know, those huge, you know, get terms and conditions privacy policy, those documents you never read because, you know, they're 16 pages long and enormously complicated. Tunnel Bear are confident in their privacy, so they've made this incredibly easy to read. They spell out everything for you. And if you don't understand any of that, you can just reach out to support and they're gonna help you out, but you will understand it. And another reason I think the Tunnel Bear is so great is because there's basically one account and then you can use five devices. I don't know about you, but I've subscribed to services where it's like, so I've paid and then it's like, oh, you wanna use that on your phone? You wanna use that on your tablet? You wanna use that on your other computer? Uh, pay up, it's gonna be a subscription for each of those. With Tunnel Bear, one account, five devices. It's perfect. I, I, I don't think there's any device I can't have it on and I've got tablets, phones, two computers. I got a spare device. I could, I could put it on another device. I don't know what that would be. But for a free seven day trial to try out all of this stuff, see how great it really is, just go to tunnelbear.com slash brain food. Again, that's tunnelbear.com slash brain food. There's a link in the description below. And do remember that if you go through that link, do that free trial, it helps support us here at Today I Found Out, so we especially appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.